Today we're looking at uh, a small number of coins that were um, uh, on loan to me from a friend. She wanted me to take a look at these because her father purchased these at least 20 years ago. Open up the box here. And we have some gold coins, which I don't particularly feature all that often because, frankly, I can't afford a lot of gold coins. But my uh, friend's dad uh, purchased this presentation piece probably at least 20 years ago when these coins would have, when gold was under 400 an ounce, and so these would have been purchased for less than $100 a piece. She, she didn't have any of the exact details. She just knew that it had been sitting around for quite a while. And what we're looking at here are uh, three British coins. These are going to be sovereigns, which have a value of one pound. And that these are in their pre-decimal system. So this was back when you had pennies and shillings and crowns. And at that time, uh, you had uh, one sovereign or one pound was worth four crowns or 20 shillings. So if you think about how large a silver crown is, it would take four of those to equal one of these gold sovereigns. And that kind of speaks to how the... Uh, the price of silver versus gold was stable for a long time, but in the uh, about a hundred years ago, they started to separate, and gold has shot up a lot, while the price of silver has uh, not shot up nearly as fast. So, each of these are made with 0.917 gold. So, I guess out of 24 carat, uh, I guess that would, that would make this. Um, I don't know if this is specifically 22 carat, but it would be something like that. So the other 80.8% uh, is probably things like copper that keeps it a, a pretty similar look. Each of these is going to have a gold weight of 0.2354 ounces. And so if you're looking at spot value, spot price today, that's going to make each of these worth about $450 based on the spot price I looked up on the day that I recorded this uh, particular video. So with the sovereign coins, they, uh, I don't think sovereign is the denomination. That's just what they called their one pound coin at the time. And these, um, I believe just going from my memory that uh, British made uh, gold coins that they called the sovereigns about the 1600s. They stopped it, paused it for a couple hundred years, and they started making them again in the early 1800s. And then they were used as circulation coinage um, through the early 1900s. And then ever since then, uh, it's not really daily spending money for people anymore. People now prefer, well, after that, preferred paper money. Before, obviously, today people use put everything on cards. And... Um, so usually now they're made for sets and collectors and things like that. And so uh, we've got three different monarchs shown here, but let's start by taking a close look at the reverse of this coin. So we've got, let me zoom in here a little bit. This is a scene that is shown on a lot of coins. It is called the uh, St. George Slaying the Dragon. There are, uh, they use this design for a lot of crowns and sovereigns for uh, well over 100 years, I believe. So a similar design. So again, it doesn't say uh, sovereign or anything like that. Th these did come in half sovereigns. There may have even been quarter sovereigns at one point, but, but uh, this is what we're looking at. The... Um, The, of course, these are going to be British coins, so let's flip it over, and we've got the, the older portrait of uh, Queen Victoria on here. This one's a little bit more well-worn than a lot of the ones that you'll find, and because the British sovereigns are some of the easiest gold coins to find out there, you usually are going to pay spot price unless it's uncirculated or something worth grading. Otherwise, most of the time, you're just going to get spot price if it's extra fine or anything below. It's just going to be the uh, the gold melt value. So as we look at the Victoria portrait here, the KM number on this one is 785. We'll move to the next monarch, 
which is Edward the Seventh. Now, as far as the little coin holder this is in, it's definitely a presentation piece, but uh, cheaper than what you normally see, and uh, that probably goes to something that was pretty popular, uh, you know, 20 years ago or so. It's the the clear plastic acrylic, I guess, uh, case and just a, a little 10 cent foam ring in in there. But I mean, you're you're not you're you're not trying to keep this at uh, mint state 65 or better uh, on something like this. You're just trying to make sure it doesn't roll out. Of here, so we uh, turn this one over. We've got a date of 1910 on this one, so the uh, the the uh, reverse is going to be the same on all of these. Then we're going to move to the uh, next monarch, uh, where there are coins available, and that's going to be George V. Flip this one over and going to be 1919. So nowhere on this does is, uh, uh, like I said, it's not going to have the denomination written on here anywhere. It does have this uh, Latin, with the, the name of the monarch with a Latin description going around it, which you would have found on any of the coins at the time. And so with these British coins, that's added to the confusion in addition to the fact they had the penny shilling crown pound system that is uh, difficult for someone who didn't live through it to understand but when you when you don't see any value written on these coins you just have to know how big a half sovereign was versus a a quarter i mean a, a full sovereign and so being uh, almost a quarter of an ounce on the size of this coin is how you would know that it was a, uh, a shilling. But as I was researching this uh, particular coin, I've noticed the details aren't eh, particularly sharp on there, but I looked up and saw this one has a date of 1919. And as I was trying to figure out the KM number, if I didn't say earlier that uh, the Victoria was 785, the Edward VII was 805, the uh, George V would be 820, but as I look in the catalog, they didn't have 1919 on the catalog. And so that opened up a rabbit hole for me to start investigating what's going on here. And so uh, uh, after doing a little bit of research, I found that the, uh, the British stopped making these sovereign coins for every, everyday circulation for World War II. Uh, they had more important things to do than make gold coins for their citizens at the time. They didn't make 1919 coins. So what's going on here? And as I dug into it a little bit more, several other countries that were under the rule of the Brits at the time did make sovereigns in their place. So you had Canada and uh, India and Australia and South Africa, all of them made gold sovereigns, which were essentially identical with one change. And the one change was the mint mark that was on them. The mint mark, if it had a mint mark, would be, sometimes I see it described as under the hoof right here, but I think it would have been easier to say between, right in the middle, so between the first nine and a before the second one, so right in the middle, but above it on the ground right here, and not anywhere on the ground, but just there, there's almost like a little lump right there, but there's no mint mark. If it was from Canada, it would have a C. If it was from India, it would have an I for India. That's not the way that they normally would have... Uh, made their mint mark since India liked using uh, dots and diamonds and things like that. South Africa would have been an SA. And those three countries didn't even produce coins in 1919. They didn't produce these sovereigns in 1919. One country did, that was Australia. And you had three country, or three different mints that ma made these in Australia. You had Melbourne, which would have an M. Um, Perth, which would have been an P, and Sydney would have been an S. And those mint marks would have been in the same place, and there's still no mint mark here. Now, I've been told that 
for some different years, there would have been a mint mark that appeared uh, right here under the portrait, but that's not the case on this one. So after looking for a while, I was wondering if there happened to be a, uh, a mint mark that was just kind of well-worn. Like I said, the details on this coin aren't uh, the best because, I mean, this would have been a coin in circulation in someone's pocket for, for many years. And I was wondering, do I, do I kind of see a lump up here somewhere? No, I don't. The, it would have been on the bottom half of the ground right there. And maybe there's an M right there, but if it is, it's a lot closer to the second one where the actual mint mark would be uh, purely between the nine and the one, very much in the middle, not much closer to the one. So after doing some more digging, I found out that while the sovereigns were not in production in Britain, and while people started to favor paper money over carrying gold coins in their pocket about the days of World War I, there was a place in the world which routinely still used gold coins to trade in their everyday life, and that is the Middle East. They uh, uh, really liked using gold coins. And for instance, I know that they have reproduced the, uh, the Austrian Maria Theresa Toller coin uh, for many, many years. Of course, lots of people did that. But uh, in the Middle East particularly, they liked trading precious metal coins instead of printing their own money because they liked using internationally recognized currency for uh, when they did business transactions. So there were no, as I said, there were no sovereigns made in 1919. So what businessmen in the Middle East did, this probably happened in Dubai, they would take and a real sovereign, and then mint new ones using real gold to make additional coins which could be circulated because over time they started to not have enough of them, so they minted more. They decided we don't want to we don't want to intentionally be making counterfeits. We don't want to rip anybody off. So we're going to put on here a year that is that you would not really find made from the London Mint. So they're not, I mean, they're not going to be uh, counterfeiting like the, uh, the 1911, for say, which was uh, a real year that they made these. So they decided to be nice, to not confuse people. We're going to use another date. Now, this wasn't made in 1919. This was made probably through the 20s to the 50s somewhere. Another thing that they would do, is, of course, uh, I say that, and today that does make it confusing. They, they probably had good intentions. They wanted to use real gold. They wanted to use something that people would know what it was worth. But fast forward a century, who didn't know what was going on, and I had a coin that it took me forever to figure out what was going on with this one. Now, according to some stories, I don't have a scientific way of proving this, but to compensate for the fact that it wasn't a real gold sovereign, to compensate for that, they oftentimes would use an even purer form of gold. So it was better than the 0.917%, which of course would make it a softer metal to go with it. But that's one of the reasons, the ways that they would compensate on something like this. So for me to, not always, but for me to prove that, I would actually have to have this scientifically tested. And uh, to do that, it would probably require, uh, maybe there's a way you can measure it uh, with a scale or with a caliper or something like that. But uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it would require actually taking a nick out of it and uh, you know t testing it uh, that way to, to determine the true fineness. I don't think it's worth it. To, you know, make an extra 10 bucks, but then damage the coin, even though it's only spot price anyway. So, again, it, it's possible that it's, uh, if, if they're going to fake something, it's possible that this was a coin that was actually made. Uh, it makes me question whether 
if the other two are legit or if they could be uh, fakes as well. Maybe they did other years, other monarchs. As I pointed out earlier, none of these uh, appear to be particularly high quality. They're, um, none of them are uncirculated quality. Maybe all of them could have been reprints. But we're hoping that this is real gold on here because if it's real gold, this is worth thirteen fifty, and if it's not real gold, then these are worthless. But there are other instances of places like China today who would take a a coin that is uh, uh, they would take a coin remint it out of another metal and then dip it in gold to make it appear to be a gold coin. But if you had one of those, it would wear and you would uh, down eventually and you would figure it out. So uh, hopefully these are real coins, but it would require some actual testing to figure it out. So I thought that was an interesting find. Uh, you know, my friend was just um, cleaning out her closet when uh, she found what her uh, dad who had passed away a few years ago had purchased and wanted me to take a look at it. So uh, hopefully, uh, I mean, she'll be glad that uh, she probably has something worth uh, uh, nearly $1,500 that uh, she's got here. So, all right. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.